Hi, Les. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Hello, sir. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Jones, like the song, uh, the uh, Counting Crows, Mr. Jones and me. <laughs> the Talking Head, please don't call me Mr. Jones, but the Talking Heads also have a song called Mr. Jones. Yeah, Really? I'll have to look that up later. Yeah, in and in the song, uh, Mr. Jones ends up wearing ventilated pants, whatever those are. <laughs> I don't want to know. Don't want to know. I think he's a salesman or something in there. But you know, uh -huh. David Byrne and the Talking Heads could, that is so witty, very funny. But yeah, yeah. Please call me Wayne. <laughs> Wayne, you got it. Yeah. So you're you're uh, uh, a, a lot of your work. Perhaps the bulk of your work and your interest is professional photography, model photography, and you do a wide variety of stuff. I was looking at your website. That's where I was getting most of the information. And you certainly got nudes there. You've got cosplay. You've got fashion. Can you just to start for listeners, uh, as far as your photography interest goes or your phot photography uh, vocation or or job, uh, just tell people what you do, like what, what's your experience and uh, what are the things that you focus on? No, well, pun, I, no pun intended. <laughs> well, I actually started um, as more of a hobby and then I got into, you know, a couple like shoots with friends here and there, but I've been doing event photography. I worked at a lot of nightclubs and that's where it started becoming like a, like a side, you know, gig for me to do on the weekends and, you know, at special events, it opened up a lot of doors for me to meet new models and everything else. So I do a lot of, I started off like event photography, like concerts, music festivals, uh, say like there's some, uh, like community event going on, you know, uh, all sorts of stuff that, you take pictures and it, it's fun. It, I you know make a little money on it, but I meet just great people and they introduce me to other you know. It opens up a lot of doors because I guess I'm a very sociable kind of person, so mm -hmm. it helps open up to even better things to from there. Yeah, no, that's so good. and uh, a lot of it is. Uh, I, I mean, again, I maybe I just saw a certain slice of it, but it seemed to be a. Uh, mostly women that you were f photographing, but also like models or um, actresses or something like that. Is, am I right in that? Or are yeah. they just, just regular folks? Um, Some are regular folks. Some are like cosplayers that kind of, you know, they go to the anime or comic, uh, comic conventions. Some are actresses or expiring actresses that I know. Uh, some are just normal people that just like to model as like to have fun with, and you know we mm. get together and collaborate and do great stuff together, so to speak. That's nice. That that's that's great. Do do you uh and there's do you do there's fashion photography there as well too that I saw. Is that did I am I right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. There the story behind that is I. One of my first, like, bigger outside of working in nightclubs and, you know, events was I got invited to just join a, a singer I met one night. And she was doing a fashion show, and she invited me to work with her. And I worked with her through the whole process of watching the, you know, the practice runways to figuring out the lighting and everything up until the show happened itself and we, it, it was just like kind of like a cool experience. You're doing, you know, the whole nine yards, so to speak. You're from the the beginning of the show, setting up and knowing where the good places are for lighting and all that. So that's where I went. And then I I became friends with a who a, a person that owns a kind of like secondhand or thrift store consignment shop. And that's mm -hmm. uh was more connected with uh, the gothic or the style clothing. So I worked with her with a, uh, almost like every month to do pictures of all the outfits that she had to help set up and sell on her store or to promote it on Facebook, Twitter, or whatever, you know, accounts she had. So that was something I did for a couple of years. And she, ended, like I said, you know, working with one person just leads into another, you know, it's uh, not about what, you know, sometimes it's about who, you know, by, and meeting people. Yeah. And a good referral is worth, uh, is worth a thousand dollars, worth the, 
it's invaluable, right? I work as a freelance editor partly as well. And it's oh. the same sort of thing. If someone says, uh, you know, this guy is good, then that's, that's, uh, that's another new job that you have. So that that's very good. Are you, uh, uh, I don't know how uh, I'm not, uh, apart from on my, uh, my old Blackberry, I'm not a photographer, but are you professionally trained or did you simply, are you, were you, uh, an enthusiast and you turned into a professional? Uh, so, uh, it's hard to, uh, to say is I, Originally, what um in high school and uh, in college, I was doing more video or film work, and as I was doing it in college, I found out the more aspects of you know there's the audio that goes along with the the visuals, and then there's on air talent, and then there's all the like stuff behind the scenes, and I fell in more of like love with the technical stuff, and. My thing is, is I noticed I love visuals. I, I think getting a visual picture in, in, in video, it's fun, but it takes a lot of time when you're editing and everything else. It's just uh, the time consuming, you know, so to speak. So I did. A, I started doing a little bit of still shots for videos I was working on, you know, on the side. And I just kind of found it. Um, I'm loving it more, you know, instead of working on videos, which can you know, doing like a 30 second video could take me hours of editing and, you know, rough shots and doing stuff to it. And then it doesn't work out and you have to go back and sometimes scrap everything, you know, with the picture, you, you know, just take the picture and get, you know, do a little editing in some Lightroom as I've been learning over the years. And it's, it's there, you know, mm -hmm. right. Right, right. So yeah, so that's uh, that that's interesting that that would be, be de that would develop into uh, to a career in a sense, uh, well, in a very real sense, frankly. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is that, and we were just talking before we started recording about uh, this podcast that you either used to do or it's on hiatus or you still do it. Has the very cool title of "Less Is Made," uh, which is nice. And uh, you do sort of interviews there. Uh, you do fashion commentary and other things. And uh, you, the frequency sort of varies. It sometimes was once every week, sometimes once a month. I'm presuming that had that that is, is a reflection of you being busy with other things, or or what what was going on there. I I'm actually still doing it. It's really I, I've. I'm really bad at trying to keep it going consistently. I try to do something at least every two weeks. Um, now that it's uh, where I'm living at is the, the winter weather is hitting. I'm probably going to be doing a little bit more audio work, you know, keeping up pace and try to get ahead of myself. But mm -hmm. I'm also, I also uh, do a, a help out another podcast friend of mine. So I do a, a lot of recording with him, but he he's like a machine he pumps out like three episodes a week and i'll record with him sometimes and so it is something i am doing it's just trying to stay on top of which like you know i have a i have a regular full-time job you know married life and stuff like that it's just kind of hard to keep on it but i love doing it i don't do it to try to do it consistently i just do it because i like doing it and i would like to consistently you know put it out because that would be you know to kind of it looks better you know so to speak so yes it's still an ongoing thing and i'm still passionate about it just trying to get everything done is sometimes it's hard yeah no i fully understand uh, uh i i actually one of the people i interviewed probably i don't know three or four months ago was a, a podcast expert and she was telling me that and actually right after she told me this i started to do this uh because i used to sort of uh, do them as they were ready but she said you should really pick let's say if you're going to do two a week which is what i do i she said you should always do it on particular days and you should always release them at 5 a.m so you're at the top of anyone's feed and so i now do i do it monday at 5 a.m that i release it and thursday at 5 a.m and uh it, it, but that's what she said because as like you said uh, I, you you're talking about it looking better but the other thing is about expectations of the of the listener if they know that oh yeah less is a uh, thing is on on thursday they'll they'll be expecting it and if it's not there you know you might start to lose them after a while that is um i'm learning some insider information there i like it that's that that is something i will uh remember 
Yeah, no, it's uh, it, it's good. And if you can't even one a week, I mean, that that that's a that's a pretty I know from I, I happen to be retired. So, I mean, this is just one of the things that I do. And I know from even just putting out to a week. And of course, I have other activities that I do. Uh, it's work, you know, it's not just you record it and sort of uh, slap it up on the internet, you need to do work to make it look professional and all that sort of thing. So uh, if you have, you know, and I don't, uh, you know, I'm single, I don't have any of that. If you have a family and stuff, stuff, uh, podcasting takes a lot of time. Uh, I mean, I love doing it. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's an investment. So yeah, it, it, there's a lot more work that goes into it th than you think. There's been times when I'm recording an episode and it's just like rather the audio just sounds horrible or the what I said is just like it just it's just not right. And I'm like, ah, and I'll keep <laughs> at it. And then sometimes I'll just be like, no, I'm just going to scrap this whole thing right here. I'm going to re-record it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I feel your pain. <laughs> I want to ask you too, and this is, uh, I, I, you know, I'll be fully straightforward here and say that while we were chatting before uh, you came on, because I had looked around, you were telling me that you also write, and that that's something that I also do as well, and have been doing for a long, long time, uh, uh, and have published a few things, and uh, what kinds of things are you doing? Are you doing fiction, uh, nonfiction, things about your life, uh, or or what? Uh, I guess you could say it's more of like uh, not historical fiction, but it's um I'm writing stories uh based on uh, uh things I've done, and I'm kind of fictionalizing it, or you know, making it sound more Hollywood, as, as, so to speak. Um, especially um one of my uh one of my favorite stories that I've written probably in the past couple of years is called the the real uh the real uh Ragnarok and it describes of you know it, it talks about I bring in like history with it because you know the um the Viking or Norseman mythology had Ragnarok at the end of times but I uh one of my other hobbies is I do like medieval sword fighting with uh foam weapons and oh. <laughs> they have they used to have an event that used to happen um once a year in Pennsylvania called Ragnarok and it's when they they have a place uh for one full week. People come. I think it's usually like September, October, where it's not too hot, and they just you know during the day they fight, and then at nighttime they just drink. And you're you're talking about <laughs> up to like five thousand people from around the country doing all this that are, you know, and, and it's just something I talked about, or whatever, because it's you know I. And the and put it all together. It's Ragnarok, and then I managed to make like a story kind of with some phone fighting friends that you know that I was with, and kind of made them characters. And it, it it's just kind of like what I do. I can kind of base it on like real life things, but I definitely fiction. It's not you know straight up what happened. Yeah, no, and that's a, that's perfectly legit. I mean, that's how many, many, many novelists and short story writers work. That's how I've done things in the past. I will either uh, take something from my own life and twist it around, or sometimes take something directly from my life or whatever. But the overall package, uh, where whether there are pieces based on real or not, is fictional. You I mean you can say that it's made up basically because it's not uh, like reporting. For for example, definitely not. It's it's all made up, basically. I mean, the stuff I'm writing about is definitely made up. What the what what, what do you uh, do? You have a venue yet for? Well, I guess two things. Have you done enough stories so that you're looking for somewhere to sort of put them or send them where people other people could read them, and uh. Uh, like what kind of venue do you think that would be uh, getting them published uh, blogging them uh, I, I don't I don't know there's all sort you could audio them on a you know you could have a podcast where you read them out loud for uh, 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 as well so there's many ways to do it right yeah or I thought about you know doing like an audio version or you know I don't know if I can book I have quite a few stories that are written out um i do need 
like you're telling you you're saying you you're an editor and I'm working with an editor and I need to get them like, you know, proofread, not because they're, they're bad. It's just, you know, uh, it's sentence structure, grammar, uh, the flow of the story, you know, so to speak, I want to, that, that is something I'm not the best at. And it's always good to have another pair of eyes. That's more of an expert at, and that's where I'm at. I've, I have like right now I have several stories I need to, that are my, I'll, I'll just tell you my process. When I write, I start in a notebook. I write in the notebook just to get it out of my head. You know, it's down on paper. And, you know, w- once I'm done with the story, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm done. This is written out. It's out of my head. And then I go from, you know, the notebook on the computer. And that's where it, it goes from the first rough, rough draft to like a first draft where, you know, I make sure that, you know, the words are spelled out correctly. It got some paragraphs in there, punctuations. And sometimes I'm sitting there writing a story and then it's just like, oh, well, this thing happened and I totally forgot about it happening in the story. And yet now I need to make sure that it's in the story. That way there's no uh, what ifs or anything. I want to make sure like, you know, nothing people would be like, oh, well, the story, what happened when with person or with this event or whatever you know, want to make sure that there's no that the consistency is there you know right and then from there i go uh and i have an editor i work with and they do their magic and make sure everything flows and sounds correct people make it make it from how i write it and how i talk to making it you know readable to the masses so to speak yeah no that's actually a really good idea because a lot of people think that um uh, either they don't need an editor or that all they need an editor to do is to fix the periods and the, the commas, but that's good. And hopefully it's an editor who doesn't, I mean, one of the, one of the very important things is your voice, right? You don't want an editor to be interfering with that, you know, but those other things you mentioned about kind of continuity where something happened, but you didn't refer to it kind of thing, though, those are important. So it's good that you're doing drafting as well. Uh, and that's, I always ask uh, anyone on here who writes what their method is. And uh, that's a, yeah, the one, the one about drafting, that's, I would call that a kind of a, a classic method uh, where you sort of, you know, tumble a bunch of stuff onto a page, then you go back and look at it. You have an editor help you and you basically kind of like, you uh, make it shinier and shinier as it were you know and that that's a that's a good method yeah exactly um i am kind of working uh as you're talking about i haven't gotten it to it probably like over a year but i am sort of working on a novel kind of like uh as a as i mentioned earlier as being a phone fighter you kind of create your own persona and everything and i just kind of talk about my character fictionalizing it with all the different organizations that I was a part of and how they, they started off and how they evolved into other things and the big battles I've taken part of. And I just kind of want to make it sensationalize it. And that is knowing all the characters that are in it, making sure that their names are spelt right. And I have like a look, like, uh, I have like a whole database of just characters that, you know, I like there when I'm like doing certain things, I'm like, all right, I'm in this story. And I'm like, all right, this person's there. Or if I need to add someone, I can be like, hey, you know what? This person with their little, you know, kind of bio or quick of what they were do, which right there, do would be perfect to have in this situation with me or whatever. So it is told by a, fir- uh, a first person point of view, but. I have that and then I have like all the bad guys and monsters or whatever in another list. And I put all those up, I start typing and then it's just like, all right, you know, I feel like we need to have some kind of fight happen here or something. Let's pull these guys in here. And these would be the ones that attack us out of nowhere. And my one ally is with me and then another one's coming up. So it's, it, depending on what I'm doing, I have different methods. It's kind of what works for me, but I know everyone's different. So it's, it's something I'm, I like. Yeah, no, that's, that's very systematic because frankly, that's that thing you're saying about keeping track of characters and in a database or in a list or a spreadsheet or whatever it might be. That's part of what an editor might 
would do if especially if you have like 20 or 25 characters or something like that because you have to keep track of things uh so you're doing that work there that that's uh that's a that's a really good uh idea and also uh what you're saying about i think the word you used was you know taking events from your life uh, correct me if i misunderstood this taking events maybe that happened to you but sensationalizing it which meant I think what you meant was putting it into this kind of more uh, uh, fantasy or uh, historical kind of context. Is that what you meant or did I misunderstand? No, that that, that, that exactly what I meant. Exactly yeah. what I meant. So uh, I actually did a whole like three uh, part on a podcast talking about phone fighting. So right now um, in my uh, in this time of my life, I am actually running my own group, and we're called Frost Guard. But back in 2006, when I started it, I was with a totally different group, and you know, they started off as one thing, and then there is group that we were that are close around us that we we're friends with, and then we wanted to quote unquote, you know, go to war with the other side of the state and fight those groups and then sometimes you'll have like group from another state want to come and it's just you have like little fun battles it's not anything it's more of like yeah we go on and we beat on each other and then at the end of the day we all go grab dinner or go back to camp and you know if you're legal drinking age we'll start passing around the bottle just kind of having fun you know <laughs> that's very good i don't know if you know but there's a very very old story in english called beowulf that's set back in around like the year 700 or something. I know Bear Wolf. And yeah. that's basically what they did. They fought during the day and drank at night. So. <laughs> yeah, Bear Wolf is uh, definitely uh, a story that uh, it's very, uh, that I love um, reading about and back in school and everything. And I know Bear Wolf, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but the story is just great, you know, fighting yeah. with was it Grendel? I think it's the monster that he fights. And yeah, or or Grendel's mother is it? Uh, Grendel's it's... mother is the one that he goes and fights with uh, with afterwards, and he like jumps into the pool that has no bottom, and that's where he yeah. goes and fights her, and you know. It... Yeah, I was first introduced to that. You may not know, but that book Beowulf, that story is study. I'd have a degree in English, uh, English literature, that's studied as a literary work. And now it's become more popular because I believe, I, well, I know for a fact, there's a movie out, at least one uh, about, uh, about Beowulf. And uh, that's, a, that, but that's an ancient, very, very old story. You know, it goes back to, you were talking earlier about myths and stuff like that. That's, that goes back to uh, what they call old English, which is well before the year 1000 so it's it's a very very old story speaking of old stories i also like i think it's the legend of gilgamesh that like, is uh, right and uh knowing that story is like gilgamesh is a very awesome character and he and everything but i try to think of like it's like his adopted brother it's like his companion i found him a little bit more interesting so to speak just because he's like a wild man kind of thing but and also, you know, they make it, they, as the tale goes on, his character is drawn out a little bit more and, you know, kind of see him from just being like this wild man into, you know, uh, a person that Gigglemesh learns to rely on and, you know, think of as a brother instead of just some bandit that he got into a fight with in his younger years. And I can't, I can't for the like life of me think of what the character's name is, but I know it's, he made the story more interesting for me than Gigglemesh himself. Yeah, no, I, I I don't know. I'm not familiar with that, so I can't help you there. But uh, Les, good luck with it, and please continue with it. And really uh, find a venue, because uh, there's lots out there now. The, the the This is the great thing about writing. Uh, you know, you've probably heard of self-publishing and indie publishing. Yeah. Uh, it's very easy to, to uh, well, not, not as if it's... Uh, you know, easy like frying an egg kind of thing, but it's it's a lot. You don't have to, uh, you know, find a publisher and things like that. You can get things written and published and out there for others to read uh, fairly easily. So good luck with that, and please find somewhere to get your to get your written expression out there so that people can read it. Uh, 
and as you're saying that i said i um i recently uh one of the models i work with she is a poet has her own book and she's talking about um working with me and uh helping me get it to where she's a self-publisher and that's what she does and she you know does as a side gig and she's making a little bit of money not a lot but i mean it's something she does and she's getting people to know her work Oh, I, yeah, I would, uh, I would, that would be very helpful because there are actually, I can tell you from my end, from the editor end, there are editors who specialize in helping people get their book published by themselves. So uh, if you have someone, the, the, this model that you mentioned, who, who knows a little bit about that, that's very valuable to you. So uh, good stuff. Good to hear. Anyway, thanks a lot and uh, take care. All right. Thank you for having me on. Bye.